Hello folks, Manito here, I hope you're doing good. In this video, I'll be showing you how to wirelessly transfer files to and from your Nintendo Switch. I'll be going over the setup of FTPD Pro by M-T-H-E-A-L-L. Not sure how to pronounce that, so we're just going to go with that. And, uh, <laughs> Sys FTPD Lite by Cathery. FTPD Pro is a homebrew app that will allow you to remotely access your Switch SD card. You just gotta open the app and connect on your computer or phone via FTP client. Sys FTPD Lite is a Sys module that does the same thing as FTPD Pro, but it runs in the background. So you don't even need to open the homebrew app to use it. You can just connect and there you go. Send files over. This is really helpful if you want to move more mods or homebrew over to your Switch, but you don't want to exit atmosphere, eject your SD card, and all that. So it's really good, really recommend it. And you can even take in-game screenshots and videos and move them over to your computer. Here's a few things to take note of. First, can you get banned for using this? Well, so far no one has been banned by it. I've personally used SysFTPD Lite for a few years now, and my Switch is still not banned yet. As it is with using other Switch homebrew, remember that you're doing this at your own risk, and if you happen to get banned, that's on you. Also, why am I going over the setup of FTPD Pro, the homebrew app, and SysFTPD Lite? If SysFTPD Lite can transfer files without opening a homebrew app, why, you know, why go over FTPD Pro? Well, as useful as SysFTPD Lite is, FTPD Pro can transfer bigger files at a faster speed. The only caveat is that since it is a homebrew app, you need to keep it open while transferring files. You can use whichever works for you, you know, it's better to have just multiple options. Next, in this tutorial, and in all of my other tutorials, I'll be using a Windows PC for the computer sections. You can still follow along if you're using another OS, but some steps will be different. And with that, let's go over what's required. You'll need a moddable switch running Atmosphere Custom Firmware. Click the first tutorial link in the description, and it will take you to my Atmosphere Custom Firmware setup tutorial. If you don't already have your switch set up with Atmosphere, pause this video, go watch that one, and then come back here. If the video is unavailable, the link will be replaced with a text tutorial. And that's all you'll need before starting this tutorial. Before we get started, make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay notified of future videos, live streams, and to support the channel. I noticed most of you watching aren't subscribed, so please, help me get to 20,000 by the end of the year. It'd be much appreciated. I also have a community Discord server where you can join to talk with me and other members of the community, or if you need help with mod stuff. With that out of the way, let's get to the tutorial. Turn off your Switch and put your SD card into your computer. Go to the first tutorial link in the description, and it will take you to the download page for FileZilla. FileZilla is a FTP client that is available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and it's free. An FTP client is a program designed to transfer files between two computers. In this case, between the computer and the switch. Under Quick Download Links, click Download FileZilla Client. Click on Show Additional Download Options to find the right option for your computer. I'm using a Windows 64-bit computer, so I'll go with the first option. The setup.exe. Download it, and open it. Go through the setup and leave the default option selected. Open it up and click View. You can enable or disable any windows that you don't need. We only need to see the contents of the SD card, so I'll disable most of them. You can see here. Just disable the ones that I'm disabling, and there we go. Click the next tutorial link in the description and it will take you to the GitHub releases page for FTPD Pro. There's two versions of the app available a classic version, and a pro version. The difference between these are mostly cosmetic. FTPD Pro does have a few extra features, but for the most part it's the same experience no matter which one you go with. Click show all 16 assets, and download ftpd.nro or ftpdclassic.nro. I'll be using ftpd.nro. Click it to download it, and move it to the switch folder on your SD card. Eject your SD card, put it into your switch, enter RCM, and boot into Atmosphere Custom Firmware. Go to System Settings, scroll down to Internet, and make sure you're connected to the same network as your computer. This won't work if you're on different internet connections. 
you should see your IP address on the right. Now go back to FileZilla on your computer, enter your switch IP address next to host, and enter 5000 next to port. On your switch, go to the homebrew menu via album or title takeover and open FTPD Pro. Now press quick connect on FileZilla, and this little pop-up will appear and say this server does not support FTP over TLS. For now, click the checkbox and click OK. You will now see the contents of your Switch SD card here on the right. To save this connection so you won't have to re-enter your info every time you want to connect, press Ctrl and S. This will save the info of the last site you connected to. Click Rename, and you can rename it. I'll call it Switch Ethernet. since this is the IP address used while my switch is connected to the internet via ethernet cable. Your IP address will be slightly different depending on if you're using a wired or wireless connection as shown here. As you can see, there's only a few digits that are different. If you're ever having issues connecting to your switch, make sure you're on the same internet connection and double check your IP. Press OK, and if you go back to File up here, go to Site Manager, then you can reconnect through here. Select your site, and press connect. I'm already connected though, so, you know, I can't really reconnect there. Oh, and you can also click right here, and it'll show your previous sites. If you're good to go with just using the Homebrew app and have no interest in SysFTPD Lite, which allows you to transfer files while you're on the home menu or in a game, then you're all done and you can stop watching. But if you'd like to set up SysFTPD Lite where you won't need to enter the Homebrew app to access your SD card, then we're going to do that right now. Click the next tutorial link in the description. It will take you to the GitHub releases page for SysFTPD Lite. Download the latest zip and open it. If you try moving the atmosphere and config folder over to your SD card in FileZilla, it won't move. Why? Well, you need to extract any zip, rar, or 7-zip folders before moving them over to your SD card via FTP. Extract it. And there we go. Okay, now we can move it over here. All right. Now open the config folder on your SD card. Open sysftpd. Right-click config.ini and click view slash edit. You'll get a pop-up saying that no program has been associated with the extension ini. Select use system association, which should be notepad, and press OK. You can now set a username and a password to connect to your Switch SD card when using SysFTPD Lite. It's highly recommended to set up a username and password so that no one hacks into your Switch SD card when you're connecting with other users via other homebrew such as Switch LAN Play. For the video, I'll set my username as Manito and my password as 12345. If you scroll down, you'll see other settings you can adjust. A button combination which will allow you to pause SysFTPD light, and a way to have the LED on your Joy-Con or Pro Controller light up when you connect to your Switch. Ah, finally, a use for that thing. Make any adjustments you want, click File, Save, and you're good to close it. Click the checkbox and press Yes to send the file back to the SD card. Now close the FTPD app on your Switch by pressing plus, hold the power button, tap Power Options, and press Restart. On FileZilla, enter your username and password that you put in the config file. Make sure your switch is on and press Quick Connect. Select Abort Previous Connection, click the checkbox, and click OK. You can now access the Switch SD card without needing a Homebrew app open. Depending on what you're doing, you may not be able to access certain folders though. For example, if you have Smash open, you won't be able to open its title ID folder. The same applies to other games. Another neat thing about SysFTPD Lite is that if your Switch is connected to the internet via Ethernet cable, then you can transfer files over while the console is in sleep mode. Just make sure you have Maintain Internet Connection in Sleep Mode enabled. You can find that option in Sleep Mode Settings. And that is all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more content. Shout out to my channel members. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you, yes you, you who's watching, for your support and watching to the end. On the left, you'll see a playlist for my other Switch Mod tutorials, 
and on the right, a video that YouTube recommends for you. I highly recommend checking out the other Switch modding guides because there's some pretty neat stuff. Have a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this, the God bless. See ya. Praying for ya.